Hey everyone, welcome back to Orthopedic Indications. If you're watching this particular video, there's high likelihood that you either know or you're about to have a uh, foot or ankle surgery, and that can oftentimes involve being uh, non-weight bearing for an extended period of time. Oftentimes it's going to be around six weeks for whatever reason. That's kind of the time that we oftentimes use. It could be longer, it could be shorter, depending on what you're having done. It sounds overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff that, that goes into the preparation, but if you can take the time to set yourself up for prep, then it will um, help make your, give yourself a much smoother recovery. So first off is just understanding the timelines. I think it's really important to talk to your surgeon and understand what the surgery involves, what the procedures are, what the recovery is going to look like, and if you're going to be non-weight bearing and for how long. If you're going to be non-weight bearing for six weeks, you want to talk to your surgeon about what that exactly means. How are you going to stay off your foot? Do you have a boot? Do you have a cast? And when can you start putting weight on it again? And I think knowing the timetable can help you plan accordingly. You know, it's one thing when we talk to somebody about um, ankle surgery um, and we say, hey, we're going to be non-weight bearing for six weeks. It doesn't mean you're like ready to go at six weeks. It usually takes a period of time of about four to six weeks to progressively increase weight bearing, increase activity, and ends up being closer to three months, uh, sometimes even longer until you're fully walking on it after the, after the procedure. Then you have to choose your mobility device and there's different options that you can, that you can use. The most oftentimes used is crutches. Um, those are great. Um, we can use a walker sometimes. That, be, that can be really helpful. Those have been around for a long time, but it does require some upper body strength. Now we have things such as knee scooters, which are a great option for staying stable and mobile, helping you get around, particularly for longer periods of time. For somebody that has pretty good balance, I'll talk to them about using an eye walk. Uh, and that's a really good option because it allows you to navigate stairs. And oftentimes it's a, you can use it without a crutch. So a hands-free crutch that allows you to move around a, a little bit more naturally. It actually uses more body, more, more of the muscles in your leg that are more, uh, similar to walking, um, and helps you, helps you get around a little bit better. Sometimes too, you getting uh, something called an even up can be really helpful, particularly if you're, if you're in a boot for a period of time, they're like a 20 to $30 item on Amazon. And that can be really helpful to getting yourself um, just a little more even because the boot will lift you up a little bit on the one side and that can really kind of throw off your gait uh, a little bit. I oftentimes recommend trying getting the device beforehand, trying it out beforehand. You can get it delivered overnight. So in a pinch, you can get it like sometimes even same day, depending on where you live. But get it beforehand, try it out before. And sometimes too, you can ask your surgeon to send you to physical therapy preoperatively. So like kind of a prehab kind of situation, give you instructions on maintaining non-weight bearing, getting you to kind of think about the way your house lays out or your home is or your apartment so that you kind of know the things you need to be thinking about when it comes to recovery. And then that leads into preparing your home for recovery. You know, if you're, uh, you got to think about your home setup, you're going to be spending a lot of time resting, you're going to be off your feet and you want to make things as easy as possible. So you want to clear your walking paths, remove any tripping hazards. You want to have a recovery zone that's got everything you need that's close by, you know, phone, Netflix, medications, some way or means to elevate your foot to keep the swelling down. Think about the bathroom, uh, think about how you're going to get your food um, and how you can kind of pivot from one place to the next. So doing all that stuff preoperatively can be really helpful. Make sure you have help. Make sure you have somebody that can be there to, to kind of help you for those, especially for those first couple of days, because after getting the medications and everything on board, if you're a little drowsy, you're trying to manage pain, there's a lot of things coming at you. So if you can have a family member or friend or even a hired service that can help assist you with things like cooking, cleaning, getting to your appointments. That's going to that's gonna just relieve a lot of stress. You want to go ahead and stock up on essentials. Think about what you want to do for your, di your diet, what you're going to eat. Uh, it's not easy to get out there and run errands. So making sure you got plenty of easy to prepare meals, making sure your medications are all set up. Anything else you might think that you need to help prepare for being off your feet for a period of time. I think being thinking through pain management is key. We're going to prescribe some medications. I usually do four different medications. I'll do a Tylenol, 
I'll do ibuprofen or it's another type of anti-inflammatory medication. I'll do gabapentin and then we'll use like a stronger narcotic. And the combination of those four medications is oftentimes enough of a, a means to kind of manage everything. Tylenol, ibuprofen, and gabapentin, for example, we'll schedule those, especially for that first week. So just take them on a routine basis. And then the stronger medication, the narcotic, we use for what we refer to as breakthrough pain. So the pain that's not controlled by those other medications. And we want to get you off of those stronger medications as soon as possible. Um, so three to five days is a reasonable timetable to expect to be able to get off of those medications. So I think that's something important to think about um, when you're when it comes to the medications. So just even ask, hey, what are you going to prescribe me? Is there any chance you can send them beforehand so I'm not running to the pharmacy, uh, especially if, if you don't have that much help. Think about tra arranging transportation. And again, this is kind of goes in line with having good help. You're not going to be able to drive right after surgery, especially if it's on your right foot. So you know, make, make plans ahead of time to get your rides to and from appointments figure out where you have to be, you know, work, follow-up appointments, physical therapy, all those kinds of things. Like think through those things and kind of make a plan or a schedule. And then that leads into this idea of being off, off of work. So, you know, somebody who can potentially work from home, I'll tell them, if you can give it two weeks, that would be great. You can probably get back to work even sooner than that. Um, if you have a manual job, it's a lot longer to get back to full activity, especially if you're off your feet for extended periods of times for a like a fracture or a fusion procedure of some type, it can be three to four months realistically until you're really getting back. And that's if things are like really moving along. So being realistic in what the t expectations are for getting back to being on your feet, being getting back to those activities, particularly if they're physically demanding jobs, um, you need to make sure you set yourself up with reasonable expectations. Don't forget about your pre-op instructions, you know, nothing to eat or drink after midnight, which medications you need to avoid, how to properly clean the surgical site, all those things are going to be important. And then mentally, just think about this from a perspective of gearing yourself up, what the timetable is going to be, because I guarantee, especially with foot and ankle surgery, it's going to feel a lot longer than what you're what you're thinking it's going to be. And even the simplest, quote unquote, even though there's really no simple surgery, simplest of surgeries, you'd think that it wouldn't be that big of a deal. It's even with some of the minimally invasive procedures, like the recovery, even though we have seen things speed up, it does take longer than you would think. So anytime you work on your foot, foot or ankle or foot and ankle injuries, it almost automatically you got to think about it in a three month window and kind of a month by month perspective. So it can be that long to getting back on your feet and, and getting back to the things you want to do. So that's it for today's video. Preparing for foot and ankle surgery, especially if you're non-weight bearing, say for example, six weeks, it's going to feel overwhelming. It's going to feel like it's taken forever. It's not uncommon for have people say, this was a lot bigger lift than I thought I was getting into. But at the end of the day, if you know what the expectations are, I think it's going to be a lot easier for you. And these are just a simple, couple simple tips that you can use to prepare for foot and ankle surgery and be able to get yourself in the right frame of mind for healing. That's it for today. Take care. Cheers.